Hey everyone, I'm Kevin. I'm an information system student at CMU, and you're watching my first video on this channel, which is about the college admissions profile that got me into these schools. But before I talk about my stats, awards, activities, etc., if you're new here, please be sure to like and subscribe. So first, I'll share a little bit about the high school that I went to. So I went to a K-12 private school in Calgary, which is in the Canadian province of Alberta. Um, and it was probably the best education that I could have found in my city. And I was also lucky enough to do pretty much anything I wanted to in high school. But the only one thing that I didn't like about my high school was that it had a pretty inflated um, impression of its students. So for example, they thought our regular courses were more difficult than everyone else's courses. So we had severe grade inflation and then pretty much everyone had 4.0 GPAs. Um, and at the same time, they also thought the students were so good that it was unfair to rank people amongst each other, um, which is why we didn't have class ranks either. So it was a great school, but I think it did some things that gave um, us as students like pretty unfair advantages in the admissions process. It's also worth mentioning that our school did have AP, but it was structured a little bit weirdly. So basically, to graduate from high school within Alberta, you had to learn some amount of content set by the province of Alberta. And depending on how much uh, content overlap there was between the AP course and the Alberta course, some of our AP courses stretched out over two years, which meant that if I started taking that course in grade 11, which is what happened for the most part, then I had to take the AP exam in grade 12, which is after uh, my missions were submitted or, or my applications were submitted. So you'll notice when I talk about my stats that a lot of my courses um, had their AP exams in grade 12, which might be kind of weird for a lot of American applicants, but I think the colleges understood based on um, the school profile that we sent them. And it's also worth mentioning that we started high school in grade 10. So in Canada, grade seven to nine is junior high. So my grade nine, which is like freshman year, didn't actually uh, contribute to high school at all. So I didn't get to do AP in grade nine. But at the same time, like I'm sure colleges understood based on my situation. And one last thing I'll mention is that because our school is really small, the AP curriculum was still kind of a work in progress. So when I was there, I didn't get to do like AP micro, macro, or AP computer science, which are like pretty common APs. But um, those APs were offered to students uh, after I graduated. Uh, so I'm just pulling up all my applications right now. Um, I applied to 20 schools in the US, Canada, and the UK, but most of the schools I applied to were American. So the only Canadian school I applied to was the University of Toronto, and I was admitted to their computer science program. And I'm pretty sure I just had to like submit some grades and short answers to uh, submit my application there. Um, the only British school I applied to was the University of Cambridge, and I was also admitted to their computer science program. Um, but the application and interview process were pretty long, so if you're interested in how that went, uh, feel free to drop a comment and I'll make a video about that as well. And as for the American schools, I got into, uh, besides CMU, I got into UC Berkeley's Electrical Engineering and Computer Science program, uh, UCLA's Computer Science and Engineering program, Cornell's College of Engineering, Duke's School of Engineering, and Rice's Statistics program, where I received the trustee scholarship worth $60,000. So I did the SAT three times. Um, I did it once in grade 10 because I thought we might move, uh, my family might move. So I wanted to have some kind of test score to apply to other high schools with. Um, and I also did it twice in my junior year where I did pretty well because um, I'd say I spent a lot of time on Khan Academy. And I achieved a super score of 1570, um, an English score of 770, and a math score of 800. And I got a 21 on my essay. I also did the ACT once at the start of senior fall. For the most part, it wasn't that much extra prep because I did the SAT a few times. So my total score was uh, 36. I got a 35 in English and 36 on the other sections. And for writing, I got a 10. So I did two subject tests. Um, firstly, math level two, where I got an 800 in grade 10 and physics, where I got an 800 in grade 11. Um, I took these pretty early because um, I took them when I was in the middle of preparing for like math or physics olympiads. So for the most part, like it wasn't that much extra prep and I could do like uh, two birds, one stone. So by the time that I applied to colleges, I had only taken five AP exams because of the way our school's AP worked. So in grade 10, I took um, AP Chinese language and culture, which I still studied for because um, I did Chinese school outside of school. Um, and I also took AP world history and I got fives on those. Um, in grade 11, I took stats, physics 1, and English language and composition, 
and I also got fives on those. So as I mentioned before, I did most of my exams in grade 12 and I self-studied for the Physics C ones. Um, I ended up getting a 4 in AP Euro, but a 5 in the other exams, which helped me skip a lot of like general education requirements during my freshman year. So next, I'll talk about my top 5 awards, and I'll go in chronological order here because it probably tells like the most cohesive story about what I did in high school. So basically, I did a lot of contest math starting from grade 6, and when I was in grade 9, based on my results for like various Canadian or local math competitions, um, I got selected as one of eight students who represented Canada at this competition. And for the most part, the only people that were selected were people from Alberta. So it's not as impressive as it seems because like we were representing Canada, but we were only selected from Alberta. Um, and despite it being like an international math competition, it's still a pretty far cry from like the difficulty or the reputation that IMO has, uh, the International Math Olympiad. So it's not that impressive, but it was really fun and regardless, I still prepared a lot for it and I got a bronze medal at the competition. But then I'd say like a year or so later, I was hitting a brick wall with contest math because as I did like more challenging problems and study like more challenging concepts, I was kind of losing interest. So I wanted to pivot into things that were similar, but just not like pure math. My best friend and I, who were both doing a lot of data analysis at the time for our science fair projects, we stumbled upon this competition and we thought it was pretty interesting. And also there was like um, a lot of cash prizes involved, so admittedly like that kind of incentivized us as well. So basically the competition was like you had a few months to write a research paper about anything you wanted to, um, but using like uh, big data and like data analysis. And so we wrote a research paper about the top factors of violent crime and somehow we made the finals. So we got to fly to Toronto to present our work amongst other teams that were there and we received a prize from SAS, like the company SAS, for um, presenting apparently like the best data analytics. Um, and I didn't mention this anywhere in my application, but something that I thought was really cool was that after we did this competition, we told our friends a little bit about it and we garnered um, a little bit more interest within the Calgary community. So then after my partner and I competed, um, I think every year after that, they began selecting finalists separately for Calgary and Toronto. So there were like two different hubs for this competition, which I thought was uh, really cool. And at the same time, I was taking AP Physics 1 and I thought it was pretty interesting. So I decided to spend a little bit more time uh, preparing for like physics competitions that happen both within Canada, but also the US. So I ended up qualifying for the USA Physics Olympiad and I couldn't take the actual Olympiad exam because I wasn't living in the US, so they didn't let me. But honestly, like, I probably wouldn't have meddled or anything, so it didn't matter. And at the same time, I got to study, like, much less for um, my AP exams as well as the subject test that I took for physics. And my next award came from Canada's biggest trivia competition, uh, which is pretty similar to how, like, Quiz Bowl works in the US. And this is probably, like, the most fun academic thing I've done in high school, so uh, the fact that my friends and I treated it as a hobby kind of helped us um, in getting better at this as well. So I was on our school's team when we qualified for nationals in grade 11, and we placed 10th at this tournament. So my last award here, and probably my most impressive one, kind of comes out of left field, so I'll give a little bit of a backstory. Um, basically, I've always casually practiced debate um, with my school's club, and I also did some summer camps that were really fun, but I didn't really see any success until grade 11, and that's when a really good debater from another school transferred to my school, and he needed a partner. And if you don't know, in pretty much like all forms of debate in Canada, you need a partner, so um, I was one of the only people on my school's team that didn't have one, and therefore we got paired together. Um, and because I enjoyed debate so much, I basically stopped competing in contest math entirely just to practice a lot more so I could close the gap between uh, me and him. Also in Canada, there's two national championships every year, one for each style of debate that we do. So the first one is British Parliamentary um, and the second one is Canadian National, which is pretty similar to how Parliamentary works in the US, I think. And we were lucky enough to qualify all four times in grades 10 and 11. And our best run was in grade 12 for British Parliamentary. Uh, so I got top speaker and top team at British Parliamentary Provincials, and then we qualified and reached the grand finals at nationals that year as well. Um, and reaching the finals for this tournament also meant that we qualified for Oxford Schools finals day, 
which was an international British parliamentary tournament that had um, teams from a lot of different Commonwealth countries. So on the Common app, you get to talk about 10 different activities, but I'm only going to talk about five of them in this video because if I were to talk about all 10, the video is going to be too long, so I'll be sure to paste all the descriptions I wrote at the end of this section. So my first activity here is probably the most rewarding thing I've done to this day. Uh, basically, when I went to middle school in Houston, I'd say math competitions were actually really, really fun uh, because they were all like pretty fast paced. They were all um, held in person and a lot of them involved like team competition as well. So as a result, I went to a lot of these competitions and I actually made a lot of friends through these experiences. And then when I moved to Canada, um, I would say the math competitions there were much more like standardized exams because you kind of write them in like uh, silent classrooms with a proctor and everything and then you only hear about your results a few months later. So because contest math was so boring in Canada, I really wanted to host like fast-paced team competitions so that we could drive like greater interest for contest math within Canada. So I talked to all the universities, uh, schools, sponsors, etc. that I needed to to try to make this happen. Um, so it looks like by the time I submitted my applications, we ran two contests in Alberta that hosted 300 plus students. Um, and then even after I went to college, I still helped the team organize these uh, competitions. And we eventually expanded them to five cities in Canada. And I think now they are doing much more than host math competitions. Uh, let's see, it seems like they tutor a bunch of kids, they host webinars. Um, they've also rebranded as Math Attack Society. And the last time I checked in, everything is still going, going strong. And Team Math Attack has either already happened or it's happening sometime soon. So I'd say that this is the most rewarding thing I've done uh, for many reasons. But the main one is that I think I've learned the most from this experience, especially compared to everything else. Because it taught me like what it takes to lead a team and build something from the ground up. And that's been immensely helpful for like anything I do uh, within school and also at work um, as well. And my next activity was debate and speech. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, I eventually became like a pretty avid debater um, and also since my school was K to 12, um, it's pretty easy for me to help out and like mentor younger uh, students there in debate and speech. And of course debate was fun, but I would also say it's a huge turning point in my life because I was pretty bad at public speaking and writing prior to debate. So for these reasons, I put these two activities at the top because I felt like I was getting the most from them. And that's probably why I invested more time into these activities and saw more success as a result of that. Um, another thing I did was I made it easier for my musically inclined friends to perform at senior homes. So for context, I played violin for 10 years and anyone who sees me cry during movies knows that I have a soft spot for old people. Um, so I thought it was an easy but also awesome thing to do uh, for my community. So I did all the legwork of um, reaching out to these senior homes and setting up performances and then also finding students to perform um, at these venues. Also, I want to mention that not making this as widespread or successful as I wanted to was probably one of my biggest regrets in high school. Uh, so like, for example, Team Math Tag was much bigger than this. Um, and I think it was because I didn't have that much influence within the music community. So when I first moved to Calgary, um, I won a lot of like junior high competitions and therefore was on the radar for like the people that could help me host my own math contests. But neither my co-founder and I for this were like the best musicians within Calgary by any means. So um, because of this, it was difficult for me to like rally all the support I wanted to, to uh, grow this initiative. And my next activity is student council. So every year that I was on our student council, I was lucky enough to be elected for an executive position. Um, and I'd say for the most part, we organized like pretty standard student council stuff, but it was fun. And my best friend and I were executives together for all years of high school. And then we got to finish our run as a VP and president for a student council. Um, and the last thing I'll talk about is I also played basketball and ran cross country for my school. Um, and I also played basketball for some clubs in the city as well. Um, but I'd say the reason why I quit early was because uh, Calgary sports leagues like probably can't even touch most of the leagues I know about in the U.S. So I saw diminishing returns as time went on and I was never that accomplished in either as well so I just grouped these into one activity. 
So yeah, those were the top five activities I had in my Common App, and I'll show you the rest of my activities descriptions uh, right now. So now let me pull up my personal essay. I think this took like 20 different drafts because it was really hard for me to craft something that united my pretty random experiences together. But after I spent like a whole summer reflecting on it, I realized that the experiences I found most rewarding and the ones I felt most passionate about were the ones where I gave my community the opportunities that I wish I had. So this ranged from things as small as like, uh, let's see, helping my friends on a daily basis to things as large as building Team Math Attack from scratch. And this is totally random, but a lot of my friends know that I love to skip rocks. Um, so whenever I go somewhere and I see a rock that's like the perfect shape and also like pretty flat, so that it's pretty easy to skip, um, I would save them for later. And then the next time I drive from Calgary to the Rocky Mountains, uh, which is only an hour, so I went a lot, um, I would take these rocks with me and then I skip them. So I knew that with enough thought, I could relate rock skipping to basically my life story up to that point. Um, and I came up with something along these lines. So every formative experience in my life is a rock. And whenever I decide to skip a rock, it leaves a ripple on the lake. And that's a metaphor for like the ripple effect that my life experiences eventually have on my community. And for example, I've moved 10 times. So I had to go to a different elementary school every year actually. And it was really hard for me to make friends early on. Um, but that's why I found so much value in how many friends I was able to make in the math competitions I went to in Houston. So I wanted that kind of experience for the middle schoolers in Canada as well because I found it like super valuable. And of course there's plenty of those examples within the essay and I also took the opportunity to sprinkle a bunch of rock related puns just to make it a little bit funny uh, and show a little bit of personality. But yeah, that's the gist of the story I wanted to tell about myself to the colleges that I applied to. So I guess I'll finish by giving some words of advice. Uh, the first thing I would say is to pick a theme for your application and think a lot about how your experiences relate to that theme and center your entire application around it. So for me, my theme, uh, you know, across all my activities and all my supplements was basically leaving an impact on my community. And as you heard in my uh, personal essay, I wrote a lot about how I gave others the opportunities that I wish I had. So I think it's important to do this because, you know, colleges nowadays have like way too many applicants and only so many spots by the time they vote. If your application is not uh, memorable, it's hard for you to like get the support of the admissions officers. So my second tip, which kind of echoes the same sentiment, is to be unique um, and try to write about unique things about you. So I'd say the most unique thing about me is the fact that I moved 10 times. So I mentioned that in my essay um, and I made it like a clear, clear point as well. And also like I like rock skipping and I think a lot of people wouldn't write about that. So I wrote about that in my personal essay as well. And for all my supplements, um, of course I try to be unique. And one common essay that I used was about one of the many 10 second talents that I had. Uh, so basically, I can slap my face to make music, kind of like the way that Agnes does it in Despicable Me. Does this count as a noise? So I can do it pretty well, and if I don't have my violin on me and there's like a talent show for like a camp that I'm at, then I would perform that. And I think it kind of fits with my overall theme because it's about making a positive impact on my community. Uh, people love this thing, they all smile, they laugh. Uh, so yeah, I, I wrote a lot of essays about that. And then my last tip would probably be that you don't necessarily have to code to get into like computer science or computer engineering programs. So this might be different now because I'd imagine these programs are much more competitive now than they were like four years ago. Um, but when I was applying, I didn't really know how to code. Um, my school didn't have APCS and our programming curriculum was like in its very beginning stages and it was not that strong. So I didn't really know how to code, but I um, had like a good theoretical foundation for CS because I did math and physics and I demonstrated a lot of interest in CS as well. Um, so because of that, I think that's what got me into a lot of um, pretty good like 
uh, computer science and engineering programs. But yeah, I'd say you don't necessarily have to code to study uh, computer science. I would say like interest and passion for those things is probably the most important.